It's that time of year where everybody and their mother is talking about the skin barrier. But what can seriously go wrong when you have an impaired skin barrier? The complications that can happen in people who have atopic dermatitis, a skin condition that is the prototype for an impaired skin barrier. They are a lot more prone to losing water from the skin and they are more prone to things getting in. The complications of atopic dermatitis really can illustrate to you how vital the skin barrier is. Complication number one is skin infections from a variety of microbes, bacterial, fungal, viral. The skin of eczema frequently becomes colonized with staph bacteria, forms a biofilm further worsening the eczema. They can also get staph skin infections like impetigo, folliculitis, boils, cellulitis. Not only is the skin barrier impaired, but they itch. And when they itch, they scratch. That further introduces more bacteria into the skin. Staph bacteria is not the only one. You also have strep bacteria can cause similar problems. Viral infections are also common. Warts caused by a wart virus. Lots of people get warts, but when you have an impaired skin barrier, that wart is like, hey, this is a really cool environment. Why don't I just make some friends and put them in the neighboring area? So you get more warts spread to the neighboring skin and it can take a long time to get rid of them. So warts are more common in people who have atopic dermatitis because they have an easier portal of entry. For the most part, warts are not dangerous. They're not deadly and otherwise healthy people, they will often go away on their own, not necessitating treatment. In addition to warts, there's another skin bump caused by a virus. It's called molluscum. This is common in young children. It's a little dome-shaped bump. It's caused by a, a different virus than the wart virus. Same kind of issue where it gets into the skin more readily. When you scratch that bump, you can introduce the virus into neighboring skin, you get more bumps. This is pretty common in people, especially young children who have atopic dermatitis, similar to warts and otherwise healthy children. They should go away on their own without any medical treatment, but it can take a long time because again, they end up getting more if they scratch the neighboring skin or skin is dry. So if you're dealing with molluscum, whether it be in your child or yourself, a key aspect of helping it to go away faster is actually just keeping your skin moisturized. Take a little uh, Q-tip, dip it in some Vaseline petroleum jelly, and go around the molluscum with that to protect the neighboring skin from that virus getting in. Same thing with warts, keep the skin moisturized to reduce spread of the warts. Don't shave over these because you will inoculate more into the neighboring skin. And otherwise healthy people, these are not life-threatening. They should go away on their own without any treatment. They're, they're more of a nuisance for you and they can be uncomfortable, but they're not deadly. However, there is another viral infection that people with atopic dermatitis can develop in their skin that can be quite deadly. It's called eczema herpeticum. Uh, herpeticum meaning herpes, and that's exactly what happens. Herpes simplex virus can get into the skin, maybe from a cold sore, and it can get into the skin. The skin cracks that impaired barrier and cause a painful blistering rash. Patient develops fever. Patients who develop this, they need to be given antiviral medicines, and it can be an emergency, especially if it affects the area around their eye. It can end up involving the eye and causing blindness. So it's quite serious. And then you have fungal infection, whether it be ringworm on the body, face, the hands, the scalp. As a side note, if you're dealing with ringworm, I have a video on tips to get rid of it. So check that video out if you missed it. Not only uh, ringworm fungus, but you can also get issues with that little yeast that already lives on everyone's skin, but can get too comfortable and can take over. And that yeast is malassezia. People who have atopic dermatitis, they are a lot more likely to develop issues with that little yeast. Moving on from infections, number two issue that can arise with an impaired skin barrier, particularly in those who have atopic dermatitis, because again, they're dealing with this all the time, is allergic contact dermatitis. Basically things that come in contact with the skin, because they're, they're able to get in more easily, your, the immune system is like, uh, no thanks, and mounts an immune response, an allergy, so that anytime the patient comes in contact with that ingredient moving forward, they're going to develop 
a rash, which if you have eczema, it can be very hard to know, is this something new or is this something old? Uh, because eczema comes and goes and flares here and there. So it's hard to know, is it new or is it old? Any patient who has eczema, atopic dermatitis, who develops a new rash in the background of otherwise controlled atopic dermatitis, well, they should be evaluated for allergic contact dermatitis. They should undergo something called patch testing, which dermatologists do, put a bunch of allergens in little wells on the back and you come back at 48 and 72 hours, we see what you react to, helps provide clues to ingredients that you might be allergic to. This is really important because this is a really common issue for people who have atopy, atopic dermatitis, is developing an allergy to things that come in contact with the skin. A, because of the barrier issue, and B, because they're constantly throughout their lifetime needing to moisturize and put stuff on their skin. So they're exposed to things. Common allergens include fragrances, certain preservatives, methyl isothiazolinone, I'm always pointing out in the Dollar Tree. That can be a real issue for people who have atopic dermatitis. Nickel is notoriously problematic for lots of people, but atopics in particular. Lanolin, present in many moisturizers and ointments like Aquaphor, can be a cause of allergic contact dermatitis. And essential oils, tea tree leaf oil, lavender oil, you can develop allergies to those and you're more likely to if you have atopic dermatitis. Not only products, but there are a lot of other things that we're exposed to on our skin. Again, uh, dyes in our clothing, certain uh, chemicals that are used to treat fabrics that we wear can definitely cause an allergic contact dermatitis. Number three is irritant contact dermatitis. That differs from allergic in that there's no immune system coming in and, and you know forming an opinion on the thing. It's just irritating to the skin. For whatever reason, wool notoriously is irritating to people who have atopic dermatitis. Certain fabrics, they're rough, irritating. It's very individual. Fabrics that don't breathe particularly well can make the person overheat and just end up being irritating. Then you also have skincare products. Uh, exfoliants might be an issue. Uh, not to say that that's the case for everybody, but just something to be mindful of. If, in terms of irritant contact dermatitis, those who have atopic dermatitis are at a greater risk for developing an irritant hand dermatitis. I have a video as a side note on hand eczema, which I highly suggest you check out because I put a lot of high yield information in that video. But a, a irritant contact dermatitis on the hands is pretty common. We all are washing our hands a lot. Water is actually irritating when left on the skin and it further allows for more irritating stuff to get in. If you're in a certain occupation that uses your hands a lot, whether it be a food handler, um, somebody who handles paper products, uh, hairdressers, uh, printing, anything of that sort where you're dealing with a lot of inks, a lot of chemicals, the hands can be exposed to a lot of things that anyone can develop issues with, irritation from, but especially if you have atopic dermatitis. So check out that hand eczema video because I give tips about how to restore the barrier, how to address issues around hand washing, really high yield information. But as a reminder, you know, a lot of people when they wash their hands, they are hasty with the drying um, and you end up not drying in the web spaces. And what can happen is the uh, soapy water residue collects there in the web space. You have the friction of the fingers together, breaks down the skin barrier even further and can ignite hand dermatitis. The other issue is those who wear rings and wash their hands with rings, the soapy water residue collects up under the ring and then it's constantly moving back and forth there further can break down the skin barrier and again, ignite a hand dermatitis. So don't wash your hands while you're wearing rings. And when you do wash your hands, make sure you rinse all of the stuff off and rinse between the fingers well and dry between the fingers well. And then put on a moisturizing barrier cream, a hand cream to help protect you even further. The number four issue is for those who have skin of color and that is pigmentary abnormalities as a result of an impaired skin barrier. See, when you're losing water out of the skin and irritating stuff is coming in. You've got a lot of inflammation. You've got a lot of irritation and that affects pigment in two ways, hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation. So you've got post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, dark spots left behind from healed eczema. Um, and you also have white spots, light spots, areas where the color has lessened, gone away, hypopigmentation. The hyperpigmentation um, can fade with time and the hypopigmentation can be restored to your normal skin color with time, provided the eczema is under control. 
And the length of time it takes for those things to correct is going to be dependent on the severity of the eczema and how long it has persisted unchecked. In little babies in particular, there's a type of hypopigmentation that happens on the face called pityriasis alba. I have a whole video on this. This is something that is very common and it will take away the pigment there. It freaks parents out like, what the heck is happening? Don't be alarmed. With time, the color will come back provided the child's eczema is under control. Gentle skincare is recommended. Use of moisturizers is essential to protect the barrier. Having a humidifier in the bedroom is another key aspect to keeping things moisturized and reducing the impetus for water to exit the skin further at night. But yeah, I mean, that is, that's, a, that's a major issue and it really can impact someone's self-esteem to have discoloration uh, in either way. Uh, it really can negatively impact someone's self-esteem. Number five is probably one of the most serious and sinister complications of an impaired skin barrier. This in particular, erythroderma, is intense barrier issue going on. It can happen in those who have atopic dermatitis, but it can happen in a lot of other skin conditions. Basically what it is, is complete barrier meltdown, and you lose water from the skin. You have a bright redness. It's called erythro, meaning red derma. Uh, the skin can be warm to the touch. It's intense redness and it's widespread. This is so intense because here you've got large swaths of skin. We're not just talking about a few patches on your face where you have an impaired skin barrier. We're talking about it can involve all surfaces of the skin, large, large areas. Erythroderma is a condition that really illustrates how vital of an organ system the skin is because when you get to this point, in barrier disruption, you are, it's an emergency. You have to be managed, um, you know, by a dermatologist. Medical management is necessary with prescription topicals and intense skincare. Uh, because what happens is you start losing a lot of fluid and electrolytes. And because of that, you're prone to dehydration. The skin barrier is also vital for thermoregulation. So in the setting of erythroderma, you're at risk for hypothermia, electrolyte abnormalities, heart failure. Uh, erythroderma, it's not unique to atopic dermatitis. If, if somebody out there has allergic contact dermatitis and it's not managed, they're really being exposed to that allergen around the clock. They can, they can develop erythroderma. Patients who have psoriasis can develop erythroderma. Patients who have underlying uh, uh, blood cancers can develop erythroderma. Um, so it's not just atopic dermatitis, but it can happen and it's, it's quite serious and it can make you very sick. Number six is psychosocial issues related to having an impaired skin barrier. Do not underestimate how much of an impact having an impaired skin barrier can have on someone's quality of life, especially eczema where they're dealing with this all the time. Uh, because when you lose water from the skin and irritating stuff gets in, it leaves you very itchy, it tends to be worse at night, disrupts your sleep, you become sleep deprived. This can lead to problems with attention and with mood. People who have atopic dermatitis are at an increased risk for depression and underlying mood problems. And again, the sleep deprivation thing is really serious. As a matter of fact, many children who have atopic dermatitis, when their sleep gets this disrupted, they often will suffer in school. Their grades will, will suffer and many times they can be misdiagnosed as having an attention deficit disorder when in reality, the root cause is that they are not getting proper sleep because they are scratching all night. They may not even be aware that this is occurring, but if you videotape them, you probably see them moving around in their sleep a lot. That's not good sleep, and it can really mess up their their performance in school. Having an impaired skin barrier isn't just a problem for the individual, but it can affect people in the home as well. Parents tend to get very stressed out about this. They see the child scratching. It's very stressful. Not to mention the cost uh, can create a lot of stress in the home. The cost of doctor's appointments, managing medications, skincare products to manage it, time off of work, lost days of work. This contributes to a lot of stress in the home um, and it really can cause a lot of problems, especially uh, when things are, are really bad and the child's not sleeping well. Number seven complication of atopic dermatitis is it actually can affect your eye health. This is not something that is really ever talked about much. You can develop conjunctivitis, uh, inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye, uh, and you can also develop cataracts 
if you have uncontrolled atopic dermatitis. If you have eczema, discuss with your doctor if you should have your eyes checked because there are some eye complications that can happen in those with atopic dermatitis. And a lot of people just aren't aware of the fact that they need to have their eyes checked um, and that their eczema can potentially impact their eyeball health. And some medications that are used to treat eczema can have uh, adverse effects to the eye health. Unnecessary use of topical steroids around the eye can also impact the eye health. Last but not least, having an impaired skin barrier can actually stunt your growth. Having severe atopic dermatitis can negatively impact a child's growth rate and the growth charts can be off. And then some other situations can arise that likewise can impact the, the growth rate. Like for example, if you are on put on uh, oral steroid medication, systemic steroids, so that can impact your growth. And unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of misinformation online as we know. And one thing that I'm always seeing is people online endorsing uh, elimination diets for atopic dermatitis. And this is really um, not a good idea, not something that we recommend because it is associated with poor growth and nutrient deficiencies, malnutrition. If you believe that there is a food that is contributing to you or your child's atopic dermatitis, before pursuing any kind of food elimination diet or anything of that sort, definitely discuss with your healthcare provider because if there is a food allergy, there are ways to identify that that don't necessitate drastic measures in the diet that could, in the case of a child especially, impact their health, their growth, lead to malnutrition quite easily. All right, y'all, so those are eight complications of having an impaired skin barrier. Now, if you don't have atopic dermatitis, you're otherwise healthy, you don't have any primary skin problem, I don't want this video to alarm you for you to think like, oh my God, if I wash my face too much, am I gonna get erythrodermic? If I use a really strong exfoliant, am I going to have stunted growth? I don't think that way. These are simply complications that can arise when you're dealing with an impaired skin barrier as part of your everyday life. Um, but some of these things certainly are possibilities uh, for anyone, and it's just something to be mindful of, not only how, how having an impaired skin barrier can impact someone's quality of life and all the issues that come with it, but uh, in recognizing how much your skin does for you and keeping you healthy. I hope this video was informative to you guys. On the end slide, I'm going to put my video answering all of your questions that I got over on Instagram about eczema. It's called eczema questions answered, I think. So check that out if you deal with atopic dermatitis or a loved one does, lots of info there. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.